Hello everyone, I'm John Martinez, and today in this quick little blender tutorial, we're going to be going over all the different shortcuts that I find most useful and that I use most commonly within Blender. The reason we're making this tutorial is because with the release of Blender 3.1, the screencast keys add-on no longer works. It is a broken add-on, so I'm no longer going to be able to give that, give these keys to you anymore, so figured I'd make this little video so that way you can at least if, watch this and get kind of an idea of what it is I'm actually using, uh, the shortcuts I'm using as I make giving you other tutorials. Anyways, without any further ado, oh, let's get into it. So first thing I'm going to do is go through some really basic shortcut keys that will be common with other programs, you know, control Z, all that sort of stuff and basic navigation stuff so that you at least know how to work your way around Blender and kind of navigate around here a little bit. And these shortcuts are all going to be on a Windows computer, so not going to directly apply to Mac. I think anything that's control on Windows is, I believe, command on Mac. I'm not sure what the alt equivalent is on Mac, but you can look that up and find out. Anyways, Windows computer, Windows shortcuts. So the left click is going to function like it does anywhere else. You know, you click to select, you can box select. Right click is going to bring up a little menu for whatever object you have selected at the moment, or depending on where you're clicking, it'll change just like it would anywhere else. Middle mouse is how you're going to move around in the viewport and change where your camera's coming from. Shift middle mouse drag will allow you to actually kind of translate side to side rather than rotating around wherever it is you are. Escape will allow you to get out of whatever operation you're currently in the middle of. Like if you're moving it or something, press escape. Control save is going to bring up your save options right there. And control Z is going to undo whatever it is that you just did. Control shift Z is going to redo what you did so you can go back and forth. Control C, control V brings up a copy and paste like that. I personally don't use control V and control C all that much because whatever it is that you're copying and pasting is always going to paste it wherever the wherever the location is of the thing that you're copying, which there's a another shortcut for actually moving things around that is, I think, a little bit more helpful. The spacebar is going to play and pause whatever you've got going on. You can see the little thing moving at the bottom of here for the timeline. That's what that's going to do. Control N will allow you to select whatever option you want for creating a new project file. So those are kind of just the really basic shortcuts and stuff that are going to be common with all other programs, just so that you know that they are there. Now for actually navigating around inside of Blender within the, the viewport, changing your camera angles and everything, you know, you can move your camera around like this and like that. But you know, if you want to actually look at it from the perspective of your camera object, you will hit zero and that will take you into the camera view and that'll just toggle you back and forth like that. If we press the period key on the number pad, that will put us in a focus on whatever object we have selected, or if we have multiple objects selected, it will focus us on both of those like that. If you want to view from one of the primary axes, you can just press the one, three, or seven keys, and that will take you to the negative Y axis, the X axis, and the Z axis, or a top-down view. Uh, respectively. And if you want to view it from one of the opposite axes, so like right now we're viewing from negative Y, you can just press control one and that will take you around to the positive Y. Control three will take you around to negative X and control seven will take you down to negative Z or bottom up view. And alternatively, if you were on one of your axes already, like we're just on the X axis right now, you can press nine on the number pad and that will flip you around to the negative axis from wherever you're on. So just flip it around either way we want to like that. And if you're just out here in the free view like this, if you press nine, it will rotate you 180 degrees around the Z axis based on wherever the center of your rotation is. Pressing five will switch you between orthographic and perspective views and pressing two, four, six, and eight will just rotate your view around a little bit by 15 degrees in whatever direction you're wanting to go. And pressing the plus and minus on the number pad will zoom you in or zoom you out. Now, if you are working on a laptop or a keyboard that doesn't have a number pad, you can go over to edit preferences, then go over to input 
and put emulate number pad, which will treat the number bar at the top as though it were a number pad, depending on the context of when you're using it. All right, those are the keys to navigate around in your viewport and just really basic general stuff to get you up and running with Blender. Now we're gonna get into some really basic shortcuts that I use most often. And if you do the type of work that I do, you're gonna find that these are the shortcuts that you're gonna be using pretty much all of the time. First are the really basic commands to start manipulating objects inside of your scene. So we can rotate this object like this cube here by using R. If we press R, it'll take us into a free rotation mode and it'll just kind of rotate however we tell it to. We can press S to scale the object up and down and G to move it around. And with any of these, you can press X, Y, or Z to lock it along that respective axis. If you only wanna move it up and down or left to right or whatever you wanna do, just press whatever axis you're gonna use. And if you wanna have a little bit more freedom with it and say you don't wanna move it along the Z axis, but you wanna be able to move it anywhere along the plane that is the X and Y axes, you will press G for free move and then shift Z and that'll lock its position in the Z axis, but it'll allow you to freely move it anywhere along the X, Y plane. Also for any of these, if you've rotated your object at all and you want to move it along the object's local axes, just press whatever axis you want twice and that'll lock it along there. So like if we press Y right now, it'll only move it along the global Y axis. But if we press Y again, it'll lock it along the object's Y axis, which is helpful if you have objects that have been rotated around some. Now, if you wanna get into the edit mode, you know, you could click up here and click that, but the shortcut for that is tab. And from here, you know, you can manipulate individual vertices or whatever, change the, the shape of the object from here. Tab takes you back and forth between object and edit mode, or if you're in really any mode, like sculpt mode, if I press tab, it takes me to edit mode and back to sculpt mode. So tab just functions as the edit mode toggle from whatever mode you're in. It'll take you to tab and switch you back to whatever you were in before you press tab. Shift A will bring up the menu to add in objects or nodes if you're in the node editor. And pressing S while you're in a node editor will allow you to actually search for whatever node you want to add in. If you want to duplicate an object, press shift D and it'll duplicate it and bring it into the move mode so you can place it wherever you want it to. And if you want to move it along just one axis, like you would any other time, just press that axis and you can lock it to there. If you press Alt D, it will also duplicate an object, but it will link the mesh of them together so that if you edit the mesh of one of them, it will affect the mesh of the other one. Useful if you want to create a bunch of objects that are going to look exactly the same and you don't want to have to worry about changing them each time you do it. And this functions for lights as well. You can Alt D to create duplicate lights. And now whatever I change on one of them is also going to change on the other one. Once you've created objects, if you want to delete them, you can select multiple objects by using shift and it will select all of them and press X to delete them. Or you can press the delete key and that will delete it without bringing up the prompt to make sure that you want to delete them. If you're in one of the node editors and you press X to delete, it will also delete the connections that you have between there and create an empty gap between those. The way to get around that is by pressing Control X. That will delete the node, but leave the connection so that you don't have to reconnect everything. If you want to rename one of your objects, say you have a lot of things and you would just want to keep organized a little bit, you can press F2 and that will bring up the editor for the object name. You can rename it to something like this is a tutorial and now it'll show up in the view layer as this is a tutorial or whatever you decide to name it to. If you want to select everything in a window, you can press A and that will select everything that is in the window that your mouse is currently hovering over. The same thing even applies in the node editor. Press A to select all of the nodes within your given setup and you can press Alt A to deselect everything in either one. If you want to change the position of your 3D cursor, you can press Shift S and that will bring up the menu to decide where your cursor will go or whatever object you have, you can decide where you want that to go as well. The most common ones that I use are cursor to world origin and cursor to selected. The shortcuts for those are one and two respectively. So if we take our object and move it way over here, our 3D cursor is still in the middle of our scene right there at the origin. Press Shift S and bring up the menu, then press two to move the cursor to selected. That will move our cursor up there and we can move it back by pressing Shift S plus one. And then if you want to move the selection to wherever the cursor is, press Shift S and eight. I don't use that one as much, but it's helpful to know that. If you want to decide the function of your mouse cursor, then you can press Shift space bar and this will bring up a little option. This is a duplicate, of course, of all the options that you have over here. So you can Shift space bar and press G and now 
you can move an object by clicking and dragging rather than having to press G and move it around like that. Or what I use it most for is switching back and forth between box select, so being able to select everything like that, or annotate so I can draw things on screen. Mostly helpful if you're making tutorials like this, but you might use it for your own purposes as well. You can press H to hide an object, and unfortunately I don't know there's any shortcut to unhide an object like that, so I just control Z, or you can come up here to this panel and click the little eye tool to hide and unhide that. Say you're making an animation and you want to move the cube from here to here over the course of 100 frames or so. The way you can do that is by adding keyframes. So press I to add a keyframe. This will bring up all the options that you can add a keyframe for. You can select location by clicking on it or press L to add a location keyframe. You can see the keyframe gets added down here and the location values turn yellow over here. Alternatively, you can just hover over the location and press I. That will add a keyframe right there. Add a keyframe on location by pressing I. Move down to wherever and go here. Then you can add another keyframe there as well. And now we have a moving cube. If you've played through your animation some and you want to move the playhead back to the beginning of the animation, just press shift and left arrow key and that will move it all the way back over to frame one or whatever your start point is set to. If you want to make sure that everything within a given panel is visible, you can press home and it will zoom in or out to make sure that you can see everything and they fill up the screen real nicely. That also applies in the note editor. So you can press home and that will make sure that everything in there is visible. Really useful if your nodes are kind of scattered all over the place and you're switching between different objects and for some reason one, one node setup is looks good right here, but then on another one, when you click to it, you're all the way over here. Just press home and that will make sure that the entire thing is visible and you can find your nodes really quickly and easily that way. If you've made some changes to your object, like you've rotated it and scaled it and everything like that, you can press control A and this will bring up the apply menu. This will allow you to apply, say, your scale like that. So even though it's this bigger size like this, it's reset the scale to one. Useful if you're doing some sort of physics simulations like that or certain modifiers, the scale will work better if you actually have applied the scale. So it's a, a scale of one rather than, you know, if you have it scaled down really tiny like that, 0 0.021, apply scale and the modifiers will work a little bit better for that. The two that I use most commonly are the rotation and scale. So you press control A and S and R are the shortcuts for those two. And you can always see if there's another shortcut that you can use in a menu like this by looking at the title of whatever it is. And the letter that is underlined is going to be the shortcut for that particular option. If you have multiple objects in your scene and you want to parent one to another, that is make it so that it is always tied to another object, then you can select the child, then the parent. The parent will be the one outlined in yellow and the child will be in orange and press control P to set the parent an object like that. Then as you move one around, it automatically moves the other. If you rotate, rotates it around like that, treats it basically as one single object. And if you want to clear the parent, just press alt P and clear parent and that will get rid of the parent. So you can move that around and move that and it won't affect the other. For any number values like this, if you want to reset it to the default value, which is usually zero, just hover over it with your mouse and press backspace and that will reset it to the default. So for location and rotation, that's zero. For scale, that's one. And other things like that will also have their own default values. So for example, roughness in the shader editor, you press backspace and it will reset it all the way down to zero, even though the default is 0 0.5. So that's something you do have to look out for when using that shortcut. Most of the time it zeroes out the value. Now for some shortcuts that are going to be particular to edit mode. When you're in edit mode, you can either select vertices, edges, or faces. And the shortcuts to switch between those two are one, two, and three. You can see it changing up here in the upper left as I cycle between one, two, and three that allow us to select different parts of our mesh. If you want to extrude a face on the mesh or an edge, just press E that will allow you to extrude. Control R will bring up the loop cut right there. So as you're moving your mouse around, it'll show you the different options for loop cuts like that. You click and then you can drag to wherever you want your loop cut to be placed like that. If you want to create a loop cut that just bisects your mesh, press control R, click it wherever it is, and then just press escape. That will create your loop cut, but it will not move it anywhere. It'll just be right in the middle of of your mesh. If you want to inset a face, just select the face in face select mode and press I and that will inset the face like that. It'll create a face within the original face. And you can bevel edges by control B 
and that will create a bevel wherever your selection is. And you can change the segments of the bevel and the width of it like that from there. Now say your mesh has a hole in it like this, and there's just an empty space like that. If you want to fill that hole, go into edge select mode, select all of the edges of the face and press F and that will create a new face that joins all those together. Alternatively, if you have a point that you want to create a line that say bisects a face like this, press J, it will create a line that joins the two of them together, J for join. K will put you into knife mode like this. So you can click around and create cuts wherever you want them to like so. Then press enter to finalize that cut and create a new face like that. If you want to invert your selection, so for example, you have a lot of faces in your object and you want to select all of them except for maybe a couple of them, like say I want to select everything except this one weird shaped face right here, you could go and select all of them by holding shift and just going around and clicking all of them like that, or you can invert your selection. So select the faces you don't want to end up selecting and then press control I and that will select everything except for the face that you have selected. And this also works outside of edit mode. So if we tab out of edit mode, we have our cube selected right now. We can control I and that will select everything except for our cube. Also, if you wanna select multiple faces or vertices or whatever, and you can't use the control I because there's just too many that you don't wanna select, then what you could do is press C and this brings up circle select. You can use your mouse wheel to either increase or decrease the selection range and then just click and drag to select whatever you want to select. And then if you want to deselect something, like maybe you accidentally selected this face and you don't want to, press the middle mouse, press and drag, and that will deselect anything that you move the mouse over, like that. When you're in circle select mode, you can't move the camera around. So if you want to select, say, a face on the other side, you'll need to escape out of the circle select mode, move your camera around, press C, and start selecting again. Before we get into the node-specific shortcuts, make sure you go into Edit, Preferences, add-ons and search for the node wrangler add-on and enable that and that will give you access to some shortcuts that are really helpful for organization and just speeding up your node workflow now we'll get into some node specific shortcuts the first one will allow us to rapidly change between what nodes are actually being fed through into our material so for example we can create a duplicate bsdf change the color and the shortcut for this is Control shift left click and that will automatically change over to whatever we want to use. And that will apply to any node at all. So for example, if we put in a noise texture, we can also do it here. And that will select our noise texture for being viewed in the material shader like that. And we can just shift around for things like that. If you're in the geometry nodes, you can also use control shift left click and that will create a viewer node as well. But that's not what's actually going to be affecting the geometry here. So for example, if we add in a set position and a noise texture and just feed that in there like that. Right now it's going into the group output and if we press control shift left click, that's not going to do anything. It's not going to change anything. The shortcut for passing through to the group output in the geometry nodes is alt shift left click. So I can switch between the two of these like so by just pressing alt shift and left clicking on whatever I want to view. Like I said before, pressing X will delete a node, but it will also delete all of the connections. Pressing control X will delete the node and keep the connections. Pressing M will mute a node, which has the same effect as deleting it, but it still leaves the node in there and all the connections are in there. So you don't have to worry about that. Pressing control and dragging with a right click will delete any connections that you pass over. If you want to create a reroute for organization or just tidying things up a little bit, you can press shift and right click and that will create a reroute for any pipes that are coming out of a single output. If you have nodes inside of a frame and you just want to move them outside of the frame, you can press Alt P and that will move them outside of the frame and unparent them basically from the frame. If you want to create a node group, select every node that you want in the group and press Control G and that will create the group with a group input and output. And then you can press tab to enter and leave the group. All right, those are the node specific shortcuts that I use most often with the Node Wrangler add-on. Now we'll move on to some miscellaneous ones and then the ones that you'll need for rendering. Over here in the properties panel, you can press A on your keyboard while hovering over a given section to expand or minimize it. It's useful if you have a lot of modifiers that just take up a lot of space. You can just press A to minimize each one and get an overview of what all modifiers you have in there. 
And when you're dragging a value like this to move an object, you can press shift while dragging and that'll decrease the rate of change so you can make more granular adjustments. I use this one a lot when I'm needing to make small changes to a value. Now for some rendering settings. You can press F11 to bring up the rendering viewer. This is where you'll view all of the renders that you've made. You can press F12 to render out whatever your camera is seeing right now. So right now we are pointed directly at the cube and that is what we're gonna be seeing from the camera view. If you're rendering out an animation, you can press Control F12 and it will automatically render out every frame in your animation from start to end to whatever output you have selected here and whatever file format and all these settings that you can set over here. You can press escape to stop a render, whether it be stopping an animation or if you're just rendering a single frame, it'll stop whatever calculations it's doing and whatever has been rendered will be what you're left with. You can switch between your different render slots by pressing one through eight on the number bar at the top of your keyboard. So you can see up here slot six or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have up to eight and switch between them by pressing one through eight. So those are the shortcuts that I find myself using most commonly and think are the most important for the workflow that I use. If you use a different workflow, say for example, you do a lot of sculpting or use the painting tools a lot more, you're gonna have different shortcuts that are gonna be more important for you. If there are any shortcuts I missed or you feel are really important, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Anyways, that's all I've got for this video. I'm John Martinez and this has been Learn Together Filmmaking.